Now, Canada's Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, has repeated claims that Indian government agents were involved in the killing of a Canadian citizen in Canada. Trudeau first made the claims on Monday publicly, sparking an escalating diplomatic rift with Delhi. The victim was a Sikh separatist, Hardeep Singh Nijar. He had been wanted by India for years before being gunned down outside a Sikh temple in a Vancouver suburb in June. On Thursday, India announced it was freezing visa processing for Canadians and called on Canada to reduce its diplomatic staff in the Indian capital. In a press conference at the UN General Assembly on Thursday, Trudeau was asked if Canada was considering a tit-for-tat response. Here's what he had to say. We call upon the government of India to take seriously this matter and to work with us to shed full transparency and ensure accountability and justice in this matter. We are a country of the rule of law. We are going to continue to do the work necessary to keep Canadians safe and to uphold our values and the international rules-based order. That's our focus right now. DW's Birish Banerjee from DW Asia is here to help us unpack this. Uh, Birish, Canada seems determined to pursue uh, these explosive allegations against the Indian government. How are officials in Delhi reacting? Are they concerned? Well, Indian officials are publicly concerned, but maybe not in the area where the Can where Canadian officials would like them to be, namely in the substance of the allegations concerning the targeted assassination. That Indian officials have completely brushed aside, dismissed, they've called it absurd, they've completely rejected it. Instead, what India has done is has, has mounted a diplomatic offensive, uh, fired diplomatic salvos against the Canadians in the form of the visa bans, in the form of asking the Canadians to remove uh, staff from uh, Indian offices. And it really captures the mood in the nation and also of a government that cannot be seen to be weak on the Khalistan issue, which is why you are hearing statements like we did from the foreign ministry spokesman yesterday at his briefing in India. Let's just listen in. Yeah, look, uh, if there is any country, if you're talking about reputational uh, issues and reputational damage, if there's one, any country that uh, needs to look at this, I think it is Canada and its growing reputation as a place, uh, as a safe haven for terrorists, for extremists and for organized crime. And I think that's the country that needs to worry about it. This, this dispute has already turned into a diplomatic conflagration. Do you think there could be further escalation from India's side? The ball really is in the Indians' court. It really is up to them what they want to do with it. Because look at the sequence of events over the past few days. You had a diplomatic tit-for-tat and expulsions of diplomats from both Canada and India, after which Canada hasn't really done much. You've, you've only seen Justin Trudeau talking about engaging with seriousness the Indian side and having some sort of a dialogue to get to the bottom of this. Whereas the Indians have been upping the diplomatic ante with all the moves that we just discussed. So it's really up to India if they want to take it a step further or maybe reel it back in. Let's talk about Canada's allies in this situation because Canada has been conferring with its allies, apparently. We saw that on the, on the fringes of the G20 summit. Um, those allies are in an uncomfortable position, historically close to Canada, but they've all been cultivating ties with India, courting India uh, in recent months and years. How much backing can Canada expect from its allies in this situation, Birish? Well, it's a question that's being asked in India and it's being answered differently to the way I will perhaps answer it. And the answer to the question of backing is is this, that Canada is getting the backing that it expects. I think you will not hear any big bang sound bites that maybe some people were expecting, but look at what has happened so far. You mentioned the G20. During the G20 earlier this month, Joe Biden took up this matter with Narendra Modi in a bilateral uh, setting. You also have uh, reports that uh, the, the Five Eyes intelligence arrangement provided part, uh, some of the information that the Canadian intelligence agencies have uh, linking Indian agencies to the murder of, uh, of this Sikh uh, separatist. And and if there was still any doubt as to where the West stands on this, that was all clarified last evening by the US National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan, who said the following to the press. 
As soon as we heard from the Canadian Prime Minister publicly about the allegations, we went out publicly ourselves and expressed our deep concern about them, our support for a law enforcement process to get to the bottom of exactly what happened and to ensure that the perpetrators are held accountable. I'm not going to get into the substance of private diplomatic conversations, but we are in constant contact with our Canadian counterparts. We are consulting with them closely. We support the efforts that they are undertaking in this investigation, and we have also been in touch with the Indian government as well. And I will leave it at that for today, only to say that I have seen in the press some efforts to try to drive a wedge between the United States and Canada on this issue, and I firmly reject the idea that there is a wedge between the U.S. and Canada. We have deep concerns about the allegations, and we would like to see this investigation carried forward. So unequivocal support there uh, for for Canada from the U.S. National Security Advisor, talking about support for a law enforcement process. Um, many of us would like to see the evidence that Canada has in its hands against India. Where does that leave India? I think it leaves India with a plethora of choices, and primarily two choices, I would imagine. The first choice is India can choose and decide to... Uh, fire more diplomatic salvos, escalate this even further to the point that it sees some action on what it calls Khalistani terrorists who are in Canada. It can do that. Khalistan or, being the, what the Sikhs the, want as an independent state. Independent state, state which, is what this, which is what this separatist was uh, uh, advocating in Canada, which potentially led to his death. The second choice that India has is, of course, India could potentially uh, show, illustrate to its Western partners that it takes allegations seriously and engage with Western partners, including Canada, potentially, and talk about this. And uh, that is something that would work in India's favour at a time that the West is courting India. Well, we'll see what kind of engagement comes out of this. Barish Banerjee from DW News Asia, thank you so much.